Hello, 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 everybody. Happy NaNoWriMo. Happy first day of NaNoWriMo. Happy noveling. Happy writing together. I am Grant Faulkner. I'm executive director of NaNoWriMo. And I think I counted right. I think this is my 14th NaNoWriMo. But I feel like a complete newbie tonight because for the first time, I have pants before but you know when you pants you plan it comes with gradations on the whole spectrum so this is the first time i am a genuine pantser or i will be a genuine pantser because right now i only have the title of my novel it's called the kaleidoscope <laughs> uh, a barista uh gave it to me a couple weeks ago i asked her what she would title a novel she said the kaleidoscope so that's it that's all i'm going with uh today i was swapping emails with somebody as well and she told me that she um, is one of those people who researches a novel endlessly and never quite writes it. And so that's my idea for the main characters. The main character is going to be researching a novel endlessly, and the novel that she is writing is about heaven and hell. So this adds a new texture to it. But anyway, enough about my novel. I hope that you all have some words. And if you don't have some words, or if you have some words, we're going to write a bunch tonight. And if you don't have any words, you're like me and Mary Robinette Cole, and you will you will find the words. They will gush on the page, I promise you. And uh, with that, I want to introduce Mary Robinette Cole, our featured guest, a wonderful author. And uh, Mary Robinette is the author of The Spare Man, Ghost Takers, The Glamorous History Series, and The Lady Astronaut Universe. And she is part of the award-winning podcast, Writing Excuses, which happens to be doing a special NaNoWriMo series that I hope everybody checks out. It's really good. And she's also a four-time Hugo Award winner. Uh, beyond that, though, Mary Robinette is a professional puppeteer. Uh, she's actually promised to come back at some point and lead a puppet-driven web uh, <laughs> write-in. <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> Puppet driven? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's yeah. a little dangerous when they drive because they can't see really well <laughs> and they don't have feet. But, um, but yes, yeah. puppet can lead a writing sprint. And I wanted to say that Mary Robinette is also on the NaNoWriMo Writers Board, and she's a NaNoWriMo vet veteran. You're writing this year, aren't you? I am. I do it every year, even the years that I know that my schedule won't let me finish. I'm like, I'm still going to start it. Cool. That is so wonderful. And so, just to let people know how this is all going to work. For the next 40 or so minutes, first, we're going to talk to Mary Robinette about her writing process, and uh, and she'll provide some tips for you to be highly successful this November. Um, and then she has this wonderful prompt, and we're going to all write side by side. And um, we would love if you, I bet, I bet you're already chatting wildly in the chat, so I bet I don't have to tell you that there is a chat function here, and we would like you to chat throughout the whole the whole um, event tonight. But um, yeah, please share anything, questions, observations, anything about your own writing process. And that's what I want to talk to Mary Robinette about. So Mary Robinette, where do you write? I write wherever I am. I travel a lot. When I started writing, I was still a professional touring puppeteer. So I would write in the passenger seat of a van. Um, I would write in hotel rooms. And because of that, I learned to, that I can write wherever. So like right now I'm at a friend's house uh, in San Francisco. This morning I was in Denver. Um, in two days, I'm going to be at a retreat center. And then the after that, I'll be back in Tennessee and then Arizona and Utah. And I was like, there's, cool. there's three more weeks of travel. So, um, So I write wherever I am. So you have to do that, right? Like I that's a to. learned, yeah, mm -hmm. I have a really hard time doing that actually. Yeah. Um, and my next question is going to be, what does a normal writing session look like for you? But maybe you don't have a normal writing session. I don't. Um, so I have kind of two modes though of writing. Um, one is the, uh, what I call my luxury session, which is uh, when I've blocked time on my calendar and I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write. And the other is that I do um, micro sessions a lot. Mm. So, um, like my uh, my second novel, uh, which was a nano novel, uh, Glamour and Glass, I was living and working in Manhattan and actually was writing on my Palm Pilot uh, using graffiti. But mm -hmm. what I learned was that you can actually make a f surprising amount of progress in 15 minute increments or five minute increments through the day. So, so those are my two kind of modes. I'm either sitting down to a dedicated writing session, or I'm just kind of slipping a, a, a micro session in wherever I can. 
I think that micro session approach can be so important because because really like the, the thing with NaNoWriMo, at least for me, I've got to open up two hours a day to write mm-hmm. 1700 words. And I usually don't have two hours in one block. And so it it, it it can be tough, but I remember I used to to pull up to work and I'd, I'd sit in my car for 10 minutes and I'd mm-hmm. write for those 10 minutes. And it's, it is, it just makes you feel better once you get the 10 minutes in too, you've got something. Yeah. And so one of the the things that with the the driving and then writing for 10 minutes um, that you, that, that folks can use in their, their regular life is that um, on the drive, you were probably thinking about the novel all the way there. And so, yeah. so then you basically, so what I've learned when I, I'm having that sort of day is it's like, I try to do something. Um, it's like, okay, well, I'm doing the dishes. I think about, I think about the novel. And then when I have my first opportunity to write spit words out, I've already, I've already queued them up a little bit. Hey, Mary Robin, do you, do you, uh, this is going to be a question I bet you've never had before. Do you ever write in chain mail? Um, you know, I have not written in chain mail, but I have written in full Regency uh, period correct clothing with a quill pen. So I feel <laughs> like I should get some props for that. Definitely. Definitely. I, I just want to um, recommend any kind of costume that will help yeah. you write, you know, so so chain mail um, happens to be my favorite. But yeah, I have a uh, writing tiara. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, oh, I do actually have a travel tiara with me. It's a fabric one. Uh, but yeah, I have a tiara at home. That way, when my family is approaching me from behind, they can see the tiara and they know not to. <laughs> oh, good. Approach. Yeah, good yeah, it works tip. really well. Yeah, I like that. Um, well, getting into esoteric questions about writing, I, I know you have cats and I actually know you can talk to your cats. <laughs> and so I'm curious if your cats play any role in your writing. So interestingly, um, I learned about the talking cats. Um, so for people who are like, what? Um, <laughs> there's something called uh, augmentative interspecies communication. And basically, uh, it's a button that it's about that big around has a word recorded on it. And then the animal pushes the button and, and it produces sound. And so my cat has 112 words. Her name is Elsie. And uh, the reason I was like, oh, interesting. Um, I found out about AIC because I was researching for a nano novel. Ah. Um, I was researching animal language acquisition and ran across this, uh, Bunny the Dog, um, uh, What About Bunny, uh, at Billy Speaks. If you want to follow my cat, Elsie, um, it's just Mary Robinette Kowal, uh, mostly on Instagram. There's a little on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Uh, Right now, there's a big love fest that's happening between her and my dog. Um, it's adorable. So That's yeah, so... Uh, but they, she, I, I almost, I found out about it kind of while I was working on the Spare Man, and I have a small dog character in there. Or I should say, I knew about it when I was working on Spare Man, but Elsie actually started talking. Um, and I was deep in the the book and and I thought about giving the dog buttons and I was like it changes the plot completely the moment they can communicate to you you have a, you have a different type of writing community than a lot of people have yes um yeah well I'm curious um you know a lot of people um are new to NaNoWriMo who are with us tonight and so you know it, it can be intimidating It you know it's a little intimidating for me and I've done 14 of them to tell you the truth uh, to, especially to start. I talked to somebody today and he's like, I, I started and he was like, that's half the battle. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just, I'm just curious, what, what are your favorite tips to help people get started and get some momentum going? Well, um, so it's actually the writing prompt that I'm going to, going to give oh. today. That's, um, <clears throat> I find that if you don't have an idea that coming in and um, and free writing, often pulling from something in your own environment, something from your own life, is is really useful. But uh, but one of the best things that I've found to kind of break the the tension between you and the blank page is to give your character um, some sort of goal, a sensory detail, and have them interact with the environment. And and if you if you're like okay sensory detail where where am I it it starts to ground you a goal sort of sinks you into the character and it doesn't have to be the big one it can just be like I need to get a cup of coffee um, so that's that's for me how I kind of uh, begin to get traction on a on a piece 
And then when I get deeper into it, I start asking myself kind of bigger questions. Um, like, uh, you know, if my character is struggling with an environment, I'm like, what are other environmental things that can go wrong? If they're dealing with self-doubt, I'm like, how can I make them feel worse about themselves? Mm -hmm. So I kind of look at what part of a journey they're on and see if I can double down on it. Um, and that that often is more satisfying than to try to come up with a twist. It's like, yeah, just just lean into it. Just make them feel worse. <laughs> yes, that's your job as a writer. Yeah. Just mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I want to say I got two things here from the chat. One, um, big fan of the glamorous histories is out there tonight. And then the question, and then I think this will be our last question, and then we'll go right into to the writing uh, prompt. Um, but since you mentioned cats and research, mm -hmm. uh, how much research do you do before you write, and how important is research to your writing process? It depends on the project. Um, often, I, I can just kind of dive in and start writing. Um, but sometimes, like with the uh, the Lady Astronaut series, that's hard science fiction. It's Apollo era. So I have to, the, the research is actually pretty intensive. So what I do is I research in layers. I do just enough research to come up with a synopsis, like really broad Wikipedia level research. And then that will allow me to then, um, you know, get my synopsis. And then I, I sort of narrow the focus of my research. My feeling on the research is that it's two modes. Uh, one is load bearing, which is this is going to affect the plot. And the other is decorative. Um, and it turns out that most of the research is actually decorative. Hmm. So for the decorative stuff, um, I just use square brackets and then I go research it later. Like, you know, <coughs> Elma put on the helmet thingy that blows air over your head, you know, in square brackets. And then later I go back in and and put in the, the uh, air recirculator. I love that. It's fascinating to think that so much of that research is decorative because I think mm -hmm. a lot of people get hung up and they get stalled because they yeah. feel like they have to know all that. So that's really good advice because I do, because part of my character is that research can become a procrastination tool. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I continue researching in, in parallel while I'm working on something. So sometimes you can tell what what research book I was reading because it suddenly enters as a plot. To, <laughs> plot element. Yeah. I was going to say, one of the things I want to do is find out when, what is the history of kaleidoscopes? Somehow that's going to inform yeah, my novel, yeah. but but it will inform it later, not tonight. Um, so yeah, let's let's get started on your prompt. And, and Mary Robinette is actually going to write on screen. We're going to see her actually doing it, which is yeah. super cool. Yeah, um, I decided that uh, I think one of the things that people get hung up on is that they have to have the perfect opening line, the perfect sentences, the perfect opening. And so I decided that uh, knowing I was going to be here, that I would let you all watch me start my novel from scratch. Um, I have a synopsis um, and uh, 57 words of like, that's about it uh, in, in this document that I'm going to share. So your prompt is that I want you to add a sensory detail. Um, I want you to have a goal for your character that they they think about, that they they internalize or externalize in some way, and then um, have them interact with their physical space. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Ready? Oh, that's amazing. Okay. So, um, my nano project this year is called Smallest Magics. It's a YA fantasy. Uh, this is the very first scene, um, and uh, there you see what I've got in the first scene. I've got my outline here, which I am not going to show you because it gets into spoilers real fast, uh, except to say it's it's all real thin, like real, real, none of it's really fleshed out. This, these prompts right here are things that I use when I'm having trouble getting traction on a scene. I don't always need to use them, but they're useful when I'm like, I don't know what this is. For instance, right now, I know it's modern day North Carolina. I know I've got Tegan and, and she's a junior in high school. I have no idea where we are when we start this. Um, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know any of that. So I'm just gonna start and you all are gonna get to watch me find this and then start writing. 
Cool. And we're going to go for about, um, what should we do? 20 minutes or 25 minutes? Up to you. <laughs> okay. I'm indecisive. Uh, how about we do 20 minutes? Sounds great. Good.
I'm going to give people about one more minute. That's all right. I'm going to have to call it time. I was really immersed in mine. I could have kept going, which yeah. is a really nice feeling. How many words did you write, Mary Robin? I'm at 452, but um, this is, so the one problem with my process I uh, is that I, so if I count all of the planning words that I did, I did 772. So for nano, I paste those into a scrap file because I believe every word counts. Um, but the scene itself is uh, seven hundred. Uh, is uh, um, oops, not quite. Is uh, four hundred and fifty-two. Okay, we wrote it about the same pace. I was at a uh, four sixty-two. Oh, nice, nice. So, yeah, I want to invite one of my favorite things about NaNoWriMo when we do it online. Um, <clears throat> write in like this is when people put their own word count in chat. Sometimes people will. Um, pop in either a favorite sentence or a sentence they think is perhaps the most embarrassing or somehow funny. Um, so please do that um, to liven things up here. I'm actually going to see if I can get chat here. I did want to say, Mary Abinette, is that uh, I somehow didn't see some of these uh, comments from people. And and, and one person said, uh, Mary Robinette Cole, my fave living author. <laughs> Another person said, Mary, I was so happy to see you were here. I love listening to your thoughts on writing excuses. Thank you. So, I hope you're enjoying our nano series. Uh, we're very excited by it. Yeah, I am too. Um, yeah, people are sharing all kinds of word counts from 200 to 800. That's amazing. You, you know what I love with this is just doing some simple math. And like, what? I, let's just round up. I wrote 500 words in about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if I write for an hour, that's 1500 words. That's not bad. And if you write 500 words a day in a month, is that 15,000 words a month? I think just, so. Just that's, through, yeah. through tw 20 minutes a day. I mean, you know, so there, there you go. You, you can write several novels a year at that pace just by writing for 20 minutes a day. Yeah. And, and it really is making that small iteration like just chipping away at it exactly whether it's a novel in nanorama or beyond and we're gonna um wrap up the um the uh webcast here sorry i'm just looking to see oh yeah P mary i people said they were uh mariah tells me people are really excited to see how you were working so thank you for doing that that's a brave yeah. thing i've never done it <laughs> Uh, it's something that I do with my Patreon all the time that I'm like, look, I'm trying to explain a thing. I'm like, let me just show you how I do it. Because um, I think people have this, uh, one of the things, uh, and let me tell all of you this, that the, that people will do, one of the biggest mistakes is that you will compare your rough draft with someone else's finished draft. And then when you've been writing for a while, you will also find yourself comparing your own finished work to your rough draft. And it all just is like random at the beginning. Mine certainly is. <laughs> it was wonderful to pants it. Um, let me think. Uh, I want you to be able to tell people about where they can get your novels or if you have anything to plug. Fantastic. Um, so you can get my novels um, anywhere. Fine books are sold. But mm -hmm. if you go to my website, you can get signed copies. Oh, wow. Um, 
Uh, and, uh, and then the other thing that I'd love to plug is I have a Patreon. Um, so I teach writing classes once a month. And right now I have a standalone on my Patreon um, that is uh, NaNoWriMo Getting Started, which is a, a video with me talking you through how to do a, a week one. And All right. putting up a new module every week to kind of give some, uh, hope, hopefully, hopefully those people who just need a little bit of a boost. Yeah. Well, thank you for telling us about that. And uh, any parting words of advice? We can each give some some. Um, galvanizing advice yeah uh uh marie kondo this chase the thing that you're excited about chase the the, the spark the joy um because you are your first reader and you represent a demographic that is out there in the world otherwise there would be one copy of your favorite book so write something that excites you and uh just have the best time i think i'm gonna say a variation of that uh which is Please believe, believe in your story. Don't doubt it. Your story matters. Uh, so yeah, everything that Mary Robin has said much more poetically <laughs> than I can right now. But keep chasing your story. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. Keep writing. Write all 30 days. We'll see you somewhere in Nanoland. <laughs>